Welcome back. Our next guest is such a joy, as you can see, the giant smile on my face. She is a friend and a colleague and someone I absolutely adore. So when I saw her post on social media, her personal challenge, I was intrigued and like, okay, on two levels. So Christy Staub is a high powered executive coach. She works with senior executives all over the world, helping them to really outpeak their peak performance. And here she is now coaching herself. And I thought that was incredibly interesting and fun. So two things, she is doing it for all the world to see through social media every day, posting for personal accountability, which as far as I'm concerned, is the number two best reason to use social media as a community for accountability. The first one, of course, is to receive all those great birthday greetings when your birthday comes around. But number two is that personal accountability. So Christie's challenge, you may be wondering, what is it? Like so many of us, a few pounds over COVID and was struggling to take them off. And so she had two options. She could take responsibility or she could take the meds. And she created this challenge called Me versus Ozempic. Christy, welcome to the show. Oh my goodness, Lauren. Yeah. Thank you for what you are doing. This is amazing. I don't want to take the whole story. I want to hear it from you. Our viewers want to hear it from you. But honestly, what a brilliant, brilliant idea, because so many of us are struggling with the same question, how to wrangle ourselves to do what we know we need to do. Well, first and foremost, thank you. I think the work that you're doing on the show is incredible and Thanks. sharing messages of positivity and, and giving people things to think about, right? Because if people could think more independently right now, I think we would be in a great spot. So with that said, can you repeat your question again? <laughs> so my question is me versus Ozempic. How did you get there? And tell us, tell us what you're doing because it's incredible. And it's something to your point, not just to think about, but it's something that many of us are asking ourselves today. I think number one, it's a personal journey and it's a personal decision. Uh, I woke up on April 17th and I was like, I've had enough. This time I'm going to make a change. It's not the first time I've said that, right? <laughs> I've heard it myself coming out of my own mouth. <laughs> exactly. I felt it in my body. I could tell from a mindset perspective, I was very steadfast. And yet at the same time, I said, why is this time going to be different? And I said, there are a few things I don't do. One of the things I don't do is I never talk about weight. Never. My husband doesn't know how much I weigh. And so I thought, to myself, you know what? If I have a challenge and if I tell the world that I want to lose 25 pounds, I've put it out there in a big way. And so that was the first piece. It was like, what can be different this time is if I hop on Facebook and I announce I want to be down 25 pounds, I want to do this, take this opportunity, if I'm serious about it, create a lifestyle habit that will sustain time. And so many people I know right now are going out there and they're getting a shot or they're taking a pill. And I had that moment, Lauren, where I said, I could go get a shot. And I said, what that's not doing though, is it's not telling me, teaching me how to eat right. It's not telling me how to get into the gym and build muscle. And it's not setting me up for long-term success. Yeah. And you, not only are you a power coach, but you have been an athlete in your past. So all of these things reside in you. I mean, the rest of us may not think as clearly about those three things, but right now, I think we're bringing, we've seen there are more ads for self-medicating for everyone saying, you know, drink this protein, take this, you know, use this 
form of yeah. exercise or, you know, so many things. I mean, every day I see it on my feet, on my own feed and I have to just keep going past. Not everyone knows what works for us, for ourselves. Yeah. And we wouldn't necessarily know how to create something that would be sustainable for us. So I think the best way to learn is from someone who's doing it for themselves. If nothing else, it gives us the questions to ask for us. So guide us through that. So I think number one, I just want to acknowledge you, you hit it on the nose. It's really interesting. I'm a leadership expert. I'm grounded in values. I believe that the values, our personal core values, drive every result, good or bad, that we're experiencing in life. And I go to Matt for my clients day in and day out. And I wasn't going to the Matt for myself. Yeah. And so this was an opportunity for me to step into how am I leading myself? I am not a health expert. I'm not a health coach. I don't tell people what to do or what not to do. However, it came for me to be able to just stop and say, okay, this person is saying this is good. The next video on Facebook said this is bad. It's the same thing. It's message after message. And I was so inundated with thoughts. I didn't know what was good or right. I talked to some medical professionals and I wasn't getting the answers I wanted. And so what I did is I looked at two things that I've done that I know and trust. And that was how I went about my decision making. I had worked with a nutritionist 14 years ago just to start creating better eating habits. And I chose her program. I looked at it and what I learned, what, this is the most interesting thing. People are like, how many calories are you eating? Isn't it difficult to count calories? I'm not doing anything with calories. Today is 65 when we're together discussing this. I never counted a calorie in the last 65 days. What I did is I focused in on what I liked the least and found out I needed the most, which was focusing in on the protein that I eat in a day. I'm only eating three meals a day. I'm not snacking, nor do I have the desire to snack. For me, that was huge. People say, Christy, how do you do this? You know, I couldn't do it without alcohol. I couldn't, I couldn't stop drinking. I said, the good thing is for me, that's not an issue. Sugar was my issue. So when I say I wasn't snacking, I'm not snacking any longer and I'm not picking. If I get the right amount of protein, which back 66 days ago, if I was eating 20 grams of protein, I'd be shocked because I ate that last on the plate. What I eat now is a minimum of 105 grams of protein a day. It fills me up. It keeps me going. It energizes me. And along with the workout regimen that I've selected, it's helped me tone. And to date, I'm 15 pounds down. And I have lots of new muscle. Oh. That inner athlete is shining again, Lauren. <laughs> I see her. I see her loud and clear. So it, protein is actually one of the things that for the most part, all the marketing around says, yes, you need to eat more protein. I don't think a lot of people know how much, but supposedly a gram per pound of your desired weight sounds like what everyone is saying. And I think that's the direction you went in, but you also went on a kind of a I'm going to call it a rabbit hunt and said, what protein is best for me? How Absolutely. do I know what I'm going to do? So I, I'm guessing that that's part of this program that you're actually following. Yes. And it's clean. I mean, organic, when you can get organic, uh, grass-fed beef, when you can do grass-fed, pasture-raised, all of these things. And what's interesting, I think another big piece of this for me has been taking out the seven most common allergens and food intolerances, which include gluten, dairy, soy, eggs, peanuts, uh, refined sugar and sweeteners. And there's one that I'm missing. And what you don't realize until you start reading labels is that if you're trying to avoid something like soy, a lot of things are fed with soy. 
So you're getting soy. When people say we are what we eat, I start looking at things a little bit differently. And having taken all of those seven things out of my daily habit, out of my eating routine, what I found is I can take a little bit of whipped cream, taste it, and I immediately get feedback from the food that tells me, Christy, it's bloating your stomach. It's giving you gas. Don't eat dairy. I'll tell you, on day 17, Lauren, I was frustrated. I had followed everything. I came home. I was so tired. I crashed on the couch. I got up. I didn't get rid of my bag of favorite potato chips. I, I don't care. I'm going to go grab that bag. I grabbed that bag. I shoved a handful in my mouth. 10 minutes later, I had a pounding migraine headache. My stomach was bloated. I felt so nauseous. And I knew immediately it was the potato chips. I have not had one since. It's, it's really remarkable what your body will do and what it will tell you if you can bring yourself to that base level, right? And then what you realize is that we're willing to put up with the pain and the suffering for the short-term benefit. And yep. so I want to make sure our viewers know that this me versus Ozempic is a 90 day challenge that you created oh. for yourself. You're now on day 65, 65. Congratulations. You're down 15 pounds. You are glowing. We can all see that you're strong. Your inner, your inner athlete is making her way back out. And, and I think that's really that would scare me. I know it scares a lot of people to say, I'm going to take out the top seven allergens. When you list those things, I think to myself, what's left? <laughs> hmm. Great question. And it's funny because I've done this before, right? So I remember, and I was just sharing the story yesterday. I was sitting at a restaurant. This goes back probably four or five years, sitting in a restaurant looking at a chicken breast <laughs> and an asparagus spear. And I was like, is this what my life is? <laughs> yes, I, I have been there. <laughs> <laughs> and it, our mindset is just so powerful because now I, I don't have the sauces. I don't have the butters. I don't have the aiolis, the ranch, the whatever that we would dance our food around in before we would eat it in the first place. And now something as simple as a radish in my refrigerator. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a great radish. And I handed it to my husband. I said, it's so spicy. And he took a bite of it. And usually like, like I handle the spice and he doesn't. And he's like, it's not that spicy. My palate is changing because I'm not eating all that food that's dressed up. That's not the real food. And I'm enjoying the food for what it is. And going back to, I do have more energy. My brain fog, I, like for a while, I felt like I had adult ADD. And I, I would just always be bouncing around or I'd walk to the refrigerator and I know we do that on occasion, but I would walk to the refrigerator and forget why I was there. I mean, the brain fog was so maddening for me. I'm sleeping through the night. The two or three days before I made this, I'm done decision. I laid in bed awake for five hours. I had tried everything. I've never been a great sleeper, but for five hours, I just laid there. And it's a culmination of all the years I haven't slept. And I just said, my body isn't functioning. I'm not going back to the values, Lauren. I'm not respecting my body. Some people would say I'm living out of alignment with respect. I would say, no, I'm, I'm literally disrespecting and living the value of disrespect in the way I was treating this incredible vessel that makes what you do, what I do, what the viewers watching, it makes it possible. It gets us to and from. It helps us in whatever we do, our jobs. It helps us. And if we don't take care of our bodies like a high-performance vessel, 
our bodies, bodies just like an automobile at some time will stop working. And that headache I told you about, how many times do we have a headache and go, I'm stressed out? Or we have a stomach ache and we're like, oh, and we think it's something else. I can tell you my experience over the last 65 days when I introduced one of those things back into my body, I've had the headache. Yeah. I don't have headaches anymore for the most part. That's amazing. And when you can point to those kinds of improvements, there are definitely drivers, you know, feeling good. How many of us are willing to pay a lot of money and, and do a lot of things for in, in an effort to feel good, but not necessarily willing to make the changes in our lifestyles that will get us those results because it's commitment, it's long-term, it's forever. I'm going to encourage our viewers to please jump on Christy's Facebook, jump on her website, learn more about Christy, what she's doing. It doesn't have to be the same protocol, the same program, but I really do believe that, especially during the summer, we all want to feel good. And we know we want to look good. There's just less clothes to cover up if we don't. <laughs> By May, Lauren, with that statement, it's the first time in three years I have felt comfortable putting on a pair of shorts and going out into the world. I was hiding. Yeah, a lot of us do hide. And I know I dress people all the time. I know exactly, exactly what it looks like to hide behind your clothes and a giant piece of fabric. Christy, where can people find you? Two different places. My website, Christy at ChristyStob.com. And on Facebook, the journey is on my personal profile, not my business profile. Okay. So if you're interested in joining the journey, which many people have, uh, Follow me on Facebook and it's Christy Staub as well. Perfect. I know they're going to be looking for more. You are such an inspiration and just seeing someone real going through it makes it real for all of us. Thank you for taking the time from your schedule. I know you're very busy. I appreciate you coming to share with us and I will definitely look forward to following up and hopefully we can come back and talk about this again. Love it. Lauren, I appreciate you and the work you're doing. Thanks so much. Thank you. And we'll be right back.